Welcome back to Sipping the Dry. I'm Sean, and our episode today is Musky Madness. Madness. <laughs> Joined today, I have Thomas, our lead in marketing. You might not have seen his beautiful face, but you have seen his work on our website. To my left, I have Ryan Trajansky, head customer service, the guy who trained me, the guy who's been here a good time. <laughs> Pretty good time. <laughs> All right, boys, let's get into it because... I'm clueless when it comes to any of this. I'm not even lying to you. Musky fishing is intimidating. They're big. They have these gigantic flies. The reels are huge. They have metal leaders. There's Please. lots of slime. It's slime? Slime. I wasn't even aware <laughs> there was slime. That's a uh, common nickname for musky is uh, slime. Is slime. Yep. That's, I mean, okay. All right. Well, I am extremely interested. Um, where can we start? Because looking at it from the outside, it's too much. So there is a lot to go into it, um, but it can be pretty simple. Anybody can really get into musky fishing. You just got to have some of the right gear. Uh, you got to know where to look for them um, and know how to handle fish properly. Uh, you follow all of that, you're good to go. Okay. And I haven't fished for musky ever. Literally never even thought about it. You have been fishing for... So fly fishing musky about four or five years, um, actively targeting them the past uh, spring season, um, pretty much since I've been here for the shop. And then I first started fishing for them uh, about 08, 09, okay. something like that. I've been pike fishing um, oh my goodness. pretty much since my Not 20s. Predatory fish. <laughs> yeah. You're out, out headhunting, aren't you? Toothy critters. True. Toothy critters. Thomas, you... You took a, a whole different aspect. I look at this and go, this is too much. You went head first. You did the research. You did the time. What did you come up with? Yeah, I, I kind of just jumped straight in, and I think part of that is because Ryan was, uh, he's our local musky guy, so he, musky chip. I see him, you know, carrying these 12-inch flies around, and it's, it's really intimidating, but it looks like it's a hell of a lot of fun. So, yeah, I just jumped straight in and. There's a, it, like you said earlier, there's a lot of uh, information to digest, but just like any other fly fishing, the knowledge is out there. You just got to find it. You just got to go get it? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Ryan, as the uh, the regional expert, why don't you teach me and Thomas will help you out and we'll get this going. Where do we start? Let's start with, uh, let's start with a rod. That seems like an easy place. Let's back it up a little bit, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I'm excited. I'm ready a, to get it. I want to hit the water. I had a question in mind. You know, most people are going to wonder, where do you find muskie? Um, lakes, rivers. Um, you know, most in North America is in Canada is where you're going to find muskie. Um, they're part of the Esox family, so they're related to pike. Okay. Um, you're going to find them anywhere uh, you have states on the East Coast. Um, Vermont has them, you know, in the Midwest, you have Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and you even have some out West um, and then through the Southern parts of the Midwest, Tennessee. Um, they're a cold water, they're a warm water species, but mm -hmm. they prefer some colder water. Okay. Um, they don't really like it too much when it's warm. They get very lethargic, um, but they're very active. Um, you know, pretty much any time after ice out, you can target them ice fishing. But after ice out, um, they start to spawn. They feed heavily during the spawn. Um, and then all throughout the summer and the fall, you can target them the whole entire time. In the summertime, it gets a little warm. So handling is something to be considerate of when we can talk about that. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, you can pretty much... Uh, you can go after them all year round if you want it. True. And so you said like in the spring, so the spawn is on. Right now. Right it now. It is on. It's time to go. It is go time uh, in most parts. Some places do have closed seasons. Um, Canada, Michigan, um, even Minnesota, they may still have ice right now, and their season may be closed. Check your regulations on that one. Absolutely. That's cool. Dang. Thomas? Where would you find a muskie around here? <laughs> uh, around here, like our most popular lakes and stuff would be like Lake Cowan, in a, or like, yeah, Cowan Lake. Cowan Lake. Um, a couple other places. We have a, 
what else is out there? We're East fortunate Park. enough to have C.J. Brown nearby, yeah. Caesars Creek. You can go to oh, Allen um, in Columbus. And then in Indiana, uh, we have Brookville Reservoir. So there's quite a bit. You know, um, you can go into Indiana, as I had mentioned, as a state that has a pretty good stocking program. That's where I kind of cut my teeth on muskie fishing. Um, the first muskie lake that I fished was Webster Lake. Um, and you have James and Tippy all connected in that same area, Barbie chain of lakes. Um, if you're fortunate enough to be in Wisconsin or Minnesota, some of the best fishing in the U.S. is right there. For sure, absolutely. Yeah. And if we're talking about like pike, we're going to be going to a lot of the Lake Erie tribs, right? So. Um, yeah, there's some there. Um, pretty much pike. Uh, You have to kind of weed out some water um, to find pike. Okay. A lot of times they're kind of a bycatch. Anywhere where there's like bass usually, um, largemouth, smallmouth bass, same kind of areas you'll find pike. So they're going to be eating the largemouth or the smallmouth in there. Are they? Is, is muskie a abundant fish, or is this something that I'm not going to find that much of? Again, like it's does... kind of the northern parts of the United States. You're not going to find this um, in warm waters, um, unfortunately. Sorry. You know, Texas and Florida, you're not going to find musky. Um, they got bigger, toothier critters, I'm sure. <laughs> gar and sharks and yeah, yeah you name a it. shark. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Uh, but I digress. All right. Um, now, let's go into the rod, shall we? Yeah. Let's so do um, this is meany. This, this is, is really big. Neat. This is a tree trunk, people. Um, there's a reason for that. Um, <laughs> you know, we're handling bigger predatory fish. Um, sometimes, you know, 50 inch muskie, um, 50 inches Wow. in some places. Yes. Um, but then also you're throwing big flies. Um, you know, we're not talking about throwing a size 18 to 20 atoms. <laughs> Instead, we're throwing hooks anywhere from one aught up to eight aught. And sometimes they have Ooh. two aught or two, I'm sorry, two hooks something like uh, this articulated guy right here. Jeez, that, that thing is every bit of 10 inches long. Yeah. So, and when we're talking about rods, it's like, it's kind of been a phenomenon like the last 10, 15 years, the rise of musky fishing, right? So you, you, these uh, the guys that used to target them, they'd say just grab uh, any kind of like 10, 11 weight and you'd be good. Big, and thick, then, yeah, yeah. backbone. But it's become like a more sporterized Fly fishing. Okay. Did you just say and sporterized? I did. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> That's a good word. I've never yeah, heard of pretty that. good. Um, yeah, so. Musky fishing on the fly is probably one of the grow the fastest growing niche areas of the fly fishing industry. Um, and Thomas, you're absolutely correct. It used to be where. You know, you would grab like a saltwater stick because that's all you really had. That makes sense to me. Um, and guys started casting probably in the eight weight range, um, throwing much smaller flies. Um, as the sport grew, they realized they can throw bigger flies and still um, actively move fish. So now we're looking at something like eight and nine. I'll even go down to say seven, eight, nine weight for pike. Okay. okay. Um, and ten weights for some of the bigger pike. Musky, you're going to want to go at this with um, probably a 10, 11, or 12 weight. Some people do use eight weights. You have to be a little bit careful because you have to be mindful of how you play the fish with an eight weight. You'll mm. the fight will be a little bit longer. Mm. Um, certainly, as far as in consideration to throwing flies, I have a fly that I brought with today. This is a Bill Shears Figure Eight. Mm. This is only like a two or three aught hook on this. I could be wrong. I'm sorry, Bill, if I botched <laughs> that one, but it's a small pattern. You know, this is maybe. That's five inches long you can certainly <laughs> throw that on an eight weight with enough practice and this will work for pike as well okay nice that thing um, is still huge but as far as musky fishing specifically the 10 weight um, seems to be what i typically pack um, with me most of the time it's lightweight it's easy to cast i can cast at eight hours a day with no problem at all I start throwing the 12, and yes, my shoulder kind of feels <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. My Lord. Uh, the rod we have here, the Echo Muskie. That's the one I was looking at. Uh, this is actually Thomas's rod here. This is an 11-weight, 
eight foot eight. They make this in a uh, nine foot four model as well. The eight foot eight is pretty cool because if you're weight fishing, um, it's shorter. Mm. If you're fishing from say like a Smith fly or a fly craft raft, um, you're not going to have too much of a problem sinking the tip in the water with the longer model and you're fishing from like a deep V on bigger waters. Um, you can really, uh, when you go to figure eight, you can get your rod deeper in the water. Um, and that length comes to an advantage. True. Figure eight. I've heard you say that before, but I want to save that for when we actually get to landing the fish. But that's, yeah, that's insane. That's a whole thing you tried to explain to me. Hopefully you can explain it to our viewers and they'll pick it up because I, I can't. Let's, uh, let's pick up that rod and just talk it through because yeah. it's it's unlike a It's a unlike of, normal, yeah. Yeah. So like I said, like 10, 15 years ago, you'd be grabbing a saltwater rod and hoping that it would do the trick. But with the rise of musky fishing, um, you know, our manufacturers took notice and there was a niche that they could carve out and they came up with some wild designs. So, and obviously one of the bigger ones would be like that fighting butt and the extended uh, foregrip. The extended foregrip, that, now what is that for? Because that looks like I'm supposed to put my hand there. Am I supposed to put my hand there? You are. Okay. So as I mentioned, when you go to figure eight, you're gonna be in a position, and we'll, like I said, we'll talk about what you actually, can I just dive into it? Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, we might as well, I'm excited, I wanna know, let's yeah. do it. Uh, so the figure eight, as you're stripping your fly back and you're bringing it back, it's a form of a presentation. Um, after every cast, if that muskie's following towards the boat, you want to make sure that you still have its attention. Mm -hmm. um, and a figure eight is similar to stirring the pot. And I can't really do it the way I want to with the table here, but if I made a motion like an eight, you guys would see what I mean. You start figure eighting or creating an oval. You're basically keeping your fly in the water longer while that fish follows it in. Mm. And they assumingly probably think it's like a you know a shad going kind of crazy escaping it's you know it's, it's the prey so it's escaping the predator it's getting away so that's why you would have this handle here in the front and then the back grip here okay. so that you can actually manipulate that rod through the water and manipulate the fly and you can do a couple things to it you can kind of give it a flutter kind of uh, motion um, you can speed it up <laughs> you can slow it down anything that it takes to get that fish so you're just using every kind of technique that you can is that like based on time of day is that temperature of water what time of year is that or is it just yeah. anything to catch a fish is let the fish tell you let the fish tell you because when right. you think you know uh, the fish is going to tell you otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to just swim off. They'll either swim off, they'll just sit there for a second, um, and then take off. Um, yeah. Um, I hear they're really finicky. And they, I mean, they, they're predators, so they have amazing eyesight. Right. They so, didn't get to be big ultimate predators for no reason yeah, at all. By, they're very selective. They're finicky. It's like playing with a cat. Um, mm, when you've got the laser pointer or the feathers and you're chasing around, that cat may sit there and just wait <laughs> and wait. But then when it pounces, when it does, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So big fish don't get big by being stupid. It's what that's, you're saying, really. <laughs> very so, true. And, uh, yeah, okay. we, we have a lot of these kind of models in our uh, shop now because like we said, the rise of musky fishing is huge. It's something that we basically keep in stock all the time. So we have something like the G. Loomis IMAX Pro Muskie. That's another tailored one. I like one. that. That one is all cork and it, it's really nice. That is designed with the help of Chris Willen. Um, Chris uh, guides up in the north. I believe he's in Wisconsin. I apologize also, Chris, if I'm wrong on that one. But I know he also goes to Tennessee part of the year. Um, what's really cool about this is that particular handle. Uh, Thomas, if you could show him yeah. the... You've got that uh, round uh, portion here where mm -hmm. your hand goes. On the butt on the butt section here? Yep. That's kind of a take off of spay models. They use that round, uh, I'm not sure what that's. It's kind of like a pommel. Pommel, yeah. exactly. Yep. Um, so that can kind of help you if you're more of into the action of like stirring the pot as you figure eight. Um, that's a good way to use it. Then you also have the foregrip here so that you have two sections one when you're casting okay 
and then one for that foregrip as you figure eight. Wow. Now that reel is monstrous. That's a 9, 10, 11 grande. grande. Um, and that is not light. That is not light. And the whole thing is you do want to try to lighten up your setup. I would probably downsize the reel. Um, we just kind of grabbed a grande for presentation purposes. Sure. But like on a 10 weight, I like to use a 7, 8 size. Um, you want to lighten up your setup the best you can. Yeah. When you're casting big flies, a heavy reel uh, will just wear you down. Wear you down so sure. something lighter will make it more comfortable throughout the day. Yeah, and, and if you're casting all day, you're for sure gonna wear yourself out. We're right. talking um, fly lines uh, anywhere from 350 to 600 grain, okay. depending on what you're using. Um, you know, 10 weight's gonna be kind of that 350, 400. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then a 12 weight, you can go up to the 600. Dang, all right. Do I want a, uh, a sinking line? Do I want a floating line? Do I want an... That's a great question. It certainly depends on the time of the year and then what you're doing with the flies. I found that it's not as much of a practice to use a floating line in the muskie community. Okay. In the summertime when people are fishing topwaters, yeah, you'll use a floating. But an intermediate will work just as fine. Um, an intermediate will still allow you to work the fly on the surface. It'll dive down a little bit during your retrieve. That may be uh, a nice action. That could that be the trick. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, that could be the something they haven't seen. But a sink three or a sink five, sink six, um, this is three, an inch, three inches per second mm -hmm. to six inches per second or more seems to be kind of the way to go. A lot of manufacturers lately have built lines more specific to musky fishing. I think, Thomas, you picked up the musky custom tip from Scientific Anglers. Yeah, that one's real nice. Another one I really like using from, like, if I'm in shallower waters, I, I like to use the uh, Titan sink tip as well because it's just really easy to control. You can whip, whip it out there real quick, maybe one false cast and you're good to go so. i've been experimenting with rio's predator i like those lines a lot i've used the titan sink tip that's another okay uh, okay one of my favorites um and then airflow has some nice lines as well so all of our manufacturers that we carry will pretty much have they, something for you musky lines of some sort or another yep. nice okay um then, then moving on to the reel i see you we have it here with the uh with the line which is I mean, there's a lot of line and a lot of backing on this really big reel, but what is on the end of that swivel there? All right, so we have a certain setup here there's that is called a leader. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever used a leader, Sean? I have used a leader, thank you, sir. All right, so this is not your typical 5X, you know, two, or 3X or 2X. We're using a butt section of 40 pounds. M mono? Mono or fluorocarbon. Okay. Um, that is you know, your thick. Saltwater hard mono right here will work. Okay. If you have any of this in your box, um, this is kind of what you can go for. If not, uh, pick up some of this for your leader sections. All right. Just regular saltwater mono. And yep. this is uh, 40 pound. Yeah. So know you can do 40, 50 pound. Depends on, you know, what flies you want to throw, what you're turning over. 12 weights. Sometimes I'll go with the 50. 40 is perfectly fine. Okay. This is more so just to turn over um, the flies. This, a muskie will bite through pretty quickly. Oh, my goodness. So we adapt the butt section, and I break it down a little bit more. I add a bite wire okay. at the end here. And that's what this is, a bite wire. And this is yep. actual metal. This is a cord. Exactly. Recording. Yeah. Um, now, Rio SA, they have bite wire material okay. um, for sale. I buy some pre made um, because some, working with some of these knots can be a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. This is knottable wire, but it just takes some skill. Um, Dexterity the, in your fingertips, I'm sure. Yes. The point of the bite wire is to prevent getting bit off. Mm. So predatory fish with big teeth can bite through, like I said, 40 pound. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to use uh, straight fluorocarbon, like this leader that I have here, this okay. is 80 pound. Oh, my Lord. And 80 to 100 should be sufficient. Some people have still been bit off by 80, but that's kind of 
personal preference what you want to go with, either steel, steel. or fluorocarbon. Okay. The steel seems like nothing's getting away. Nothing's getting nothing, through nothing, this. This is uh, titanium wire. I like it. Going back to our system, if you'll take that in there. Absolutely. So I said that we have the butt section of about three feet. Mm -hmm. okay. I put a small barrel swivel in here. That is a 100 pound test, but this is a small swivel. It won't twist up your line. Um, it'll also go through your guides as you figure eight. And then I use a section of anywhere between four to uh, 18 inches of 20 pound mono. 20 pound mono. This is 20 pound maxima. This is so that if I snag up, I can break off. True. I don't have to cut my fly line. Uh, you don't have to have a break off section. It is pretty good to Recommended. have. Recommended. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, you know, you're getting caught around bushes and trees and stuff. Oh, it's, yep. Wow. So this isn't easy to, uh, or this isn't easy. This isn't hard to cast for you then. With the, the thicker rod and the more backbone you have. It takes a little bit of practice. Finesse. Um, An effort to kind of be able to cast it. But if you can do, if you can cast bass gear, and you can do like an oval cast or a Belgian cast, you should be able to cast your flies pretty well. Okay. And on the end there, we just have a fly clip. Is that right? Yeah, that, this is a snap, but there are fly clips you can add. Um, your preference, whether you want to use a twist clip, um, a closed lock snap, a stay lock of some sort, or you can do a uh, loop knot okay. if you want to tie your own lead, Just, uh, by yeah. wire. If you're sure which fly you're going to use, because these, I mean, it looks like you would put that on there so you could just real quick switch in between all these different flies to see which one's working. Absolutely, that's why I do it, is just change it literally on the fly. Um, but if you uh, had your loop knot there, you would want to just cut that from uh, your break off section. Okay, all right, uh, real quick, let's go over handling. Like yeah. when, you, uh, when you actually, you know, let's say you got one on the line, huh, they got teeth, man. What am I doing? Am I wearing gloves? Keep your hands out of their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to keep my digits right where they are and intact. Um, it can be a little dangerous if you're not sure what to do. Um, safe handling is super important for you and the fish. Mm. Um, keeping your hands out of their mouth, like I said, they have teeth. Um, they also have sharp gill rakers. I'd, I heard that. And if you get your hand up and they're too close, uh, you can cut yourself. Um, so the best way to handle them is get your hand into the jaw. I know. So <laughs> exactly. your... They have that gill raker, but you get your hand all the way up into the jaw, and there's a hard spot, and if you get all the way up there, you can hold them. And then make sure you handle by the tail okay. or underneath the belly. Support the back. If you don't want to get your hand up into that gill plate, you can hold underneath them. Mm -hmm. um, you can still kind of do your trout hold, hold the tail. The big thing is you really want to hold on to that fish so it doesn't flop around. Mm -hmm. If it gets loose, it can knock itself, you know, it can smack its head on the rocks or in the boat. Um, and can, I've seen you, you know? I've seen people cut their hands if they don't hold it well enough. Slice you, slice itself, everybody, it's just a big mess. Just yep. be careful. Just probably go with a guide or go with somebody who's fished for musky before you go out there trying yourself, eh? Absolutely, yeah. yeah if you can hire a guide or, um, or go with a buddy, that's the best way. They can teach you some of this stuff. Um, I brought some tools Safe with. Safe handling practices. Uh, these hemos, it's this is surgery. a good way to keep your hand out of the mouth of the fish. Um, that's a good way to get them. I've also brought with me uh, pliers. Ah. Um, if you, for some reason, were to get hooked while you're fishing, you know, maybe your cast uh, doesn't go right with these or, big hooks. Or the fish shakes it out and it gets in you. That's happened to me multiple times. But. Yep. Yep, That's with same. small flies. <laughs> not normally these big guys, but yeah, I can you're not imagine. pulling this out of your skin like um, some of the smaller hooks. You're no. gonna cut that. I'm going to the hospital. Yeah, we'll go to the I'm hospital. I'm gonna let them do it because let the professionals do it. Absolutely. Um, that's insane. And so you have no fear when it comes to reaching in the mouth. You, Thomas, you don't no fear. Uh, no, I think uh, a little bit of fear is a healthy. It's probably you. yeah. <laughs> it, it's a, it's good for you and good for the fish house. to be a little scared of them. So. True. Well, Stay alert. Safe practice. Um, handling the fish as well, you want to get the water, uh, the fish back in the water as fast as possible. Okay. Um, take your photos. Keep in mind that these fish don't grow big, um, 
quickly. Very, very quickly, yeah. And, you know, some uh, bigger fish, I want to say 40 inch plus, it takes like 20 years for that fish wow. to grow that size. Wow. Um, yeah, so catch and release is pretty big in yep. the musky fishing community. Um, it's pretty important to keep our fisheries sustained and keep yes, them going. Absolutely, so we can continue to, you know, appreciate this for years to come. Yep. Yeah, generations upon generations can enjoy the fish that maybe you caught today. They can, you know. How cool would that be? Your grandkid can go on and catch the same fish. It's twice as big. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, do, gentlemen, do you have anything else to add? Because, I mean, I'm not going to go out fishing for muskie by myself yet, but I'm going to make you take me very soon because, yeah, I'm ready. I feel more confident than I did this morning. But I still, I'm going to need some helping hands yeah. from my boys here. Yeah, we'll get you casting. <laughs> First sure. thing is getting you cast in a 10-way. Have you cast a 10-way? Uh, it's been a while. It's been a long while. Yeah. So we'll have to start there with a 10-way. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like a great thing just to reach out because if musky anglers aren't like trout fishers. Like they'll, they'll give you a little bit of tips. I mean, okay. it's, a, it's a more niche community, and they're more like tightly knit than... The like trout that. guys are so. I like that. Uh, yeah, don't be afraid to reach out. Somebody will help you. So. You can always call the shop here, and Ryan is head of customer service. Nine times out of the nine times out of ten, it's you answering the phone. I'm the guy. So he's yep. he's ready to answer your calls now. Nine three seven four three four eight four seven two. Call the shop. Talk to Ryan. We'll get you set up. We'll get you set up. All right, guys. Well, thank you both for being here today. This has been extremely informative, and I I love it as I always say. So uh, if you guys would uh, follow us on social media, that's YouTube, uh, Spotify. I'm, think, I'm pretty sure we're on Amazon Music. I found us. Uh, give us a like, comment. If you have any questions, you have something that you want to see us go over, you want to see me go over, just go ahead and put it in the comments, and I'll be more than happy to find an expert, and we'll get to the answer for you. Until next time, thank you so much. <laughs> Take care. Thanks.